few years ago, I was invited by a good friend, John Gordon, to ride from Concord, North Carolina, to the state line of Florida, right outside of Jacksonville. It was my first ever bikepacking trip. Yes, we did stay in hotels, but I didn't know that in advance. See, I packed everything. A change of clothes, a sleeping bag, anything I needed, I put on my bike. This was my first ever multi-day ride, and it would be my longest ride to date. This is Jonathan Fariati. He's a phenomenal ultra runner. This is Andy Gordon, John's brother. And this is Paul Gordon, John's dad. See, John is one of those guys that just embraces the suffer and decided a few years back that he wanted to ride across the United States. So, he got the cheapest bike he could find and started in California and ended in Florida. See, I was the only one that is a true cyclist. See, I had clip-in shoes, bibs, and I forced the guys to wear helmets. Most of them rode on flat pedals and tennis shoes and running shorts with no bibs. Day one, we completed 109 miles in seven hours and 27 minutes. It was extremely hot and I was toast. Day two, we started way early. I'm not used to riding at 3 a.m. And then we stopped at Waffle House. I found out very quickly on these long distance rides, you eat and you eat really well. But what happened next sucked. Okay, real quick review. Double flats. Double flats and it's raining. Ha! You suck. Yeah, that sucked. I hit a pothole so hard that it flattened both front and back tires. And yep, it was raining. Here's a trick that I learned on these multi-day rides. Drink Pedialyte. Yeah, that's a Pedialyte bottle on the back of my bike. It helps you to stay hydrated. We are in the middle of nowhere, South Carolina. And when you see one of these coolers, this is a gold mine. So, stuck my head in. Probably was in there for about five minutes trying to cool down, and then we started pedaling again. Now the last 30 miles of day two were pretty rough. There was a very strong storm that blew in and the headwind was brutal. With about 10 miles to go, the rain became treacherous. So we just kept pedaling. Day two was 138 miles and nine hours and 25 minutes of riding. Another 3 a.m. morning. 
But man, Waffle House, it hits the spot for sure. Getting up and riding very early may seem very dangerous, but we got about three to four hours every day with limited to no cars. If you attempt to ride that early, have a ton of light. There was a pretty rough storm outside of Jacksonville. The headwind was very strong, and it being the third day, my legs were not feeling great. See, one of the interesting things on this ride was everybody was riding at their own pace. We weren't trying to stay together. We regrouped in certain areas, but if you were faster, you could go off the front. See, Paul, John's dad, would leave an hour earlier every morning because he didn't want us to wait on him. So, he would get up at 2 a.m. and leave and ride by himself, and we would catch him around lunchtime. I don't recommend it, but he was determined to ride and that no one would wait on him. And we didn't. As we got closer to the coast, the headwind got stronger, but I found this trail. It ran parallel to the road for a few miles, and so on my skinnies, I took to the trail. We found out later that there was a hurricane right off the coast of Jacksonville, and that's why we were getting so much rain and wind. But we just kept pedaling because we were so close. That was the hardest storm I've ever rode in. I could barely paddle around four miles an hour. A hundred and fifty five miles in ten hours. I did it. I did it with these five guys. So a huge thank you to John Gordon. This being my first bike packing trip, it was pretty epic. And there will be many more to come. I hear he wants to do it again. So if you're interested, leave a comment.